prostation. Page 279. Alif, Alif Lamin, the revelation of the book of which there is no doubt is from the Lord of the universe. Did they say he has invented it himself, Muhammad? Surely is the truth from your Lord that you may forewarn a people none has warned before you, and they may be rightly guided. All Muhammad was done was true. Muhammad was just warning. Muhammad was just warning. In a video circulating on YouTube, a man does something out of the ordinary. This man, Grayson Brock, an American content creator, has made waves in the online world with his exceptional content. What he did this time isn't something typical. It's a journey that might transform his life in the future. The video on his YouTube channel documents his remarkable feat, reading an entire holy scripture in one sitting. This is not an easy task, as not everyone can accomplish it. However, what truly grabbed the public's attention was his decision to read the Quran in one go. In total, he spent 18 hours completing his reading. Tirelessly, he marked significant points on his body to track his progress and the parts that held special meaning to him during his reading of the Quran. After 18 long hours, Grayson finally completed his mission. <laughs> From his reading of the Quran, he distilled three key insights that were profoundly meaningful to him. First, the importance of reverence and obedience to God without associating any partners with him. Second, the necessity of self-restraint from worldly desires and living in accordance with divine guidance. Third, the duty and virtue of being good to one's parents as honoring one's parents is a core tenet of religious teachings. <laughs> uh, I wrote these like 15 minutes ago because I got the themes of the book. The first one being to fear God. That is the first theme of this book. It is essentially having a deep respect for God. <clears throat> Number two, don't follow your desires. Uh, this is a verse from the Quran. Happy shall be he that keeps himself pure. So don't just follow your desires because following your desires might lead you to sin. And sinning is when you go against yourself. That's what sinning is. That's what the Quran says sinning is. And lastly, this is from the Quran. Be kind to your parents. Even though he's a Christian, Grayson has a penchant for venturing into uncharted territories without hesitating to step out of his comfort zone. Initially, he harbored unfavorable biases about Islam, influenced by media portrayals and his social milieu. During his Quranic reading, he anticipated stumbling upon verses related to terrorism and violence. However, he was taken aback by what he encountered. Instead, he unearthed the beauty inherent within the Quran, going as far as describing it as the most serene thing he had ever encountered. I read the entire Quran in one sitting as a white boy, a uh, Christian, and <laughs> I was shocked because, uh, and I can prove that I read the whole thing because you cannot see the video right there, but I was shocked because I thought it was going to be like really evil and about, I don't know, terrorism. And it was actually uh, amazing. And the most peaceful thing I've like, after finishing, I was just like, wow. I feel like I've had some questions answered about life. It literally says, ward off evil with good. Where did this notion come from that people think Islam and is very like evil and aggressive and angry? Maybe it's because the news. I think it's because the news. Everything is from the news is fake. The news is fake. We gotta stop watching the news. Although he had dedicated his life to studying the Bible, reading it in its entirety gave him a fresh perspective. He was taken aback by the severe acts depicted in the Old Testament, which he found crazy. When he turned to the Quran, he noticed significant shared values between Islam and Christianity. The Quran's profound depth and intensity impressed him, despite its smaller size compared to the Bible. Conversely, Grayson felt that modern Christianity has strayed from its roots. This realization led him to contemplate Jesus' warning about a divided kingdom's inevitable downfall. I just read the entire Bible and the entire Quran. When I read the Bible, I was surprised at how violent it was. I've been studying the Bible my whole life, but reading all the way through, like the Old Testament is crazy. 
And I also, uh, reading the Quran made me realize that the values that uh, Muslims share with Christians, or that, that they do share values, like pretty much everything is the exact same. Islam and the Quran, the Quran is just a much more to the point, it's one tenth of the size of the Bible, so it's only ten percent. Much more clear cut, as you can kind of tell, like in uh, Arabic and Muslim culture, they're more strict, or I... Right. They're just like, there's no bullshit, basically. <laughs> they don't mess around with with uh, all this time, and you don't disrespect the, the Prophet Muhammad, and you don't disrespect Islam. Although Christianity feels like it's not really standing for much anymore, because now it's just like so loose and everywhere. And Jesus said, a kingdom, a kingdom divided will fall. Additionally, he reflected on the Bible's teaching that blasphemy against God is the only act that brings about God's wrath. In his view, this blasphemy occurs when someone places anything above God, which he regarded as a severe sin. He began to understand that worshiping a human being as God is the most blatant form of blasphemy. This realization made him more critical of the concept of divinity in Christianity. He saw that in practice, Christianity was no longer strictly monotheistic, but had shifted towards idolatry, with Jesus at its center. The commandment against idol worship is reiterated many times. Nevertheless, he observed that Christians still violate this commandment. They venerate statues and accept various widespread misconceptions. The Bible even says that blasphemy against God is the only thing you can do to not earn God's favor. Do not get into heaven. You put yourself or you put something else in front of God. And I started to realize worshiping a human as God seems blasphemous to God. Christianity is not monotheistic. It's about an idol. It's about worshiping Jesus. Worshiping Jesus, to me, it's blasphemous because you're really worshiping yourself. You're worshiping another human thinking that you can be perfect like the human. That that does not make sense. All I can say, guys, is I'm gonna... Monotheism makes sense. Monotheism is the only thing that makes sense. Monotheism is within this book. You can read it in the, New in the Old Testament. They warn, the entire Old Testament is warning God's people over and 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 over. The entire Old Testament, which is like three-fourths of the Bible. The entire Old Testament is do not put anything before God. Do not put any idols before God. Do not worship made idols. Don't do it. And they did it. They did it. They're statues. Oh, there is lies out there. There is lies. Additionally, he pointed out that it is commonly known Jesus spoke in Aramaic he previously cited a prayer from the Bible where Jesus instructs his disciples how to pray to God. What struck him was the realization that Jesus himself prayed to God and when suggesting that Jesus was not God. Our Father who out in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth that is in heaven. That's the Christian prayer and Jesus told his disciples how to pray. And it starts off with our Father. Jesus was worshiping God. And Jesus spoke Aramaic. You know how he said God, how you say God in Aramaic? Look it up. Allaha. This just might be the only religion left. The only monotheistic religion left. Truly monotheistic. Monotheistic means following the one creator, one. Intuitively, everyone knows that there must be one. There mu we must have come from one source, and that source is the truth. And that truth is God. That's the idea of God, is that it's the truth. The truth that you can go all the way back to. And now I'm realizing I've been lied to my entire life. سنريهم آياتنا في الآفاق وفي أنفسهم حتى يتبين لهم حتى يتبين لهم أنه الحق. When truth is hurled against falsehood, falsehood perishes, for falsehood is by its nature bound to perish. They, the disbelievers, want to extinguish the light of Allah with their mouths, but Allah will perfect his light even though the disbelievers hate it. It is he who sent his messenger with guidance and the religion of truth to prevail over all religions. And you see the people entering into the religion of Allah in multitudes. The world embracing Islam. Comment.
follow us. Please like, subscribe, 